Hey yo, what's good reader fam? Welcome back to my channel. It's time for another reading vlog. I didn't end up vlogging last week, which I'm kind of upset about because I read a book that I loved and that is Want by Cindy Pond. I ended up really, really liking this book. As you can see, I took quite a few notes. This book is often labeled as like a sci-fi version of Six of Crows, which I kind of low-key agree with, but I also don't like putting such high expectations on this book. If you end up wanting to read this book, don't go into it thinking that you're gonna get Six of Crows because it's not Six of Crows. It's just got some similarities. I actually might end up doing a full video book review on this book because I kind of want to start doing those again. So for this week, I have big reading plans. I'm not going to tell you all the things that I'm going to read. As this vlog progresses, I will tell you about different books that I'm hoping to read. But the book that I am currently reading is One of Us is Lying by Karen M. McManus. I've wanted to read this book for a while, and since the book explosion book in the month for the month of February is her second book, this one right here too can keep a secret, I decided that I wanted to read this book before I read that book. One of Us is Lying is about this boy who gets killed in detention. And all the students who were in detention with him now are suspects. So throughout this book, we're trying to figure out who did it and also just how they got away with it. I'm currently 148 pages into this book. I kind of tend to go into a lot of YA thrillers just expecting them to be a lot like Pretty Little Liars. I'm not the biggest fan of Pretty Little Liars and no shade if you enjoy Pretty Little Liars, like you are allowed to enjoy what you like. It's just not necessarily my story flavor of choice. I'm saying all that just to say that this book isn't necessarily like Pretty Little Liars, which I'm happy about. Though there is is still a lot of drama going down in this book, but I like drama, so it's fine. <laughs> so I'm for sure gonna be able to finish this book. I'm hoping to finish it by tomorrow, and then I will move on to another book. Let's get reading. <laughs> I'm filming this update from my bed because I don't feel like getting out of bed, so I am the ultimate lazy person right now, and I don't even care. I will own it. I am lazy right now. I just don't want to get out of bed. It's so comfortable. I spent my morning finishing up. One of Us is Lying. This book was super fun. That's like the best word that I can describe it, even though I hate describing thrillers as fun because like obviously tragic things happen in this book, but it was fun trying to figure out this mystery. It was also really nice because it was a super easy read, so it was really easy just to fly on through it. Something that I really liked about this book is that I feel like it wasn't super predictable until we got to a part where some things were kind of heavily hinted at, and it was like, oh, okay, that's what's gonna happen. But up until that point, I had no idea what was happening. My one gripe with this book is that I'm not sure how I feel about the big reveal. Obviously, I'm not gonna spoil it. If you wanna know what I'm talking about, I will leave a spoiler down below in the very bottom of this description. I wasn't really expecting the characters to be fleshed out as much as they were in this book, and I really liked that. I liked how we got to really know the characters. We learned about their school life, their personal struggles, their hopes and dreams for the future, and it was just really nice to get that when I wasn't expecting it. Lastly, another thing that I liked about this book was after the big reveal, after everything's kind of solved, we have some cushion time at the end of the book where we get to see the aftermath, which is something that I always love because I feel like a lot of books just kind of end with the climax, which makes sense. I get that that works a lot of times, but more times than not, I usually kind of want a little bit more aftermath to kind of see how it affected the characters, how that big event at the end of the story really impacted the characters, and we got that in this book, and I really liked that. Next up, I'm planning to read The Field Guide to the North American Teenager by Ben Philippe. This book is about this boy named Norris, who is a black French-Canadian moving to Austin, Texas. We follow him in this new environment, this new high school, as he tries to find his footing. Let's get to reading. I'm gonna stay in my bed and read for a little bit. <laughs> I probably shouldn't be proud of the fact that I'm still in bed, but I don't even care because I've gotten so much reading done today. I read 200 pages of this book, The Field Guide to the North American Teenager, and so far I really like this book. I really like the main character, Norris. He's got a great narration voice. He's not the most lovable character, but that's what I like about him. I like the fact that he's not perfect and has his life all together because those characters are always super hecka boring, and that's the tea I'm serving today, my friends. If I had tea right now, I'd be sipping it. He's also just a very judgy person, but that's kind of like a big aspect of of this book. The description talks about how he judges all these people and then he gets to know them and he realizes that they're not as terrible as he kind of painted them out to be. So I'm excited to see where this book goes, but right now I'm gonna get out of bed and be productive. Not that I wasn't productive, because reading is productive. To me it is anyways. It's a good lesson in characters and story structure, which are two things that are important in writing books. And I want to be a writer someday! Which, speaking of, I need to write today. I'm gonna reveal to you guys right now just how unpredictable Missouri weather is. Yesterday we had a 
tornado watch and today it's snowing. Literally, I do not understand our weather at all. It is not consistent in the slightest. I finished another book! Woo! I finished The Field Guide to the North American Teenager. I feel like I'm just a reading machine this week. I'm getting so excited about reading again. I feel like there for a few weeks I've just been kind of like meh. Not that I wasn't enjoying reading, but I felt like I wasn't making enough time for reading and now I feel like I'm making more time for it and it makes me happy and it's making me realize that I need to make more time for reading because I love it so much. Why am I not making enough time for it in my days? Like I need to make more time for it. Woo! Reading is the best. I honestly love moments like this when I'm like, oh yeah, I love reading. I forgot that I love reading so much. It's the best. So I'm gonna keep writing this book excitement wave and just keep reading, 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 reading. I guess I should share my thoughts on this book now, so I'm gonna do that. I think this book was a really interesting look at like stereotyping people, which I know sounds kind of weird, but Norris kind of does that. He kind of stereotypes different people when he gets to this new school. He's like, oh, there's the cheerleaders. They're probably snobs. Oh, there's the jocks. They're probably stupid. But then as the story progresses, he kind of realizes that they're more than just these stereotypes that he's throwing onto them and that they're people with feelings and lives full of stories. It was just kind of cool to see that character growth within him because he was kind of judging McJudgerson a majority of the beginning of this book and I liked seeing him recognize his flaws and work through them. Overall, I think that I would give this book a four out of five stars. The only reason I'm not gonna give it a five out of five stars is just because it didn't like blow me away and five stars are reserved for books that blow me away. But I still liked it, it was great. The next book that I'm hoping to finish Finish. This week is Two Can Keep a Secret by Karen M. McManus. I mentioned this at the beginning of this video. This is the book explosion book of the month for the month of February. By the time you're watching this, I feel like this live show is already up on the book explosion channel. So if you want to hear spoilery thoughts on this book, I will leave a link to that down below in the description. This story follows this girl named Ellery who moves to the small town called Echo Ridge where her grandmother lives. She moves in with her grandmother. And in this small town, all these girls are going missing. And there's also just a bunch of secrets. And our main character, Ellery, of course, finds herself wrapped up in it all. She finds herself desperate to figure out who's behind all these disappearances. I'm hoping that this ends up being a thrilling, crazy ride, because that's what I want right now. Time for a writing update. I don't have much of an update because I was struggling writing last week and I'm struggling writing this week. I'm still kind of breaking down my character stories. I'm on my third character now. I'm on the girl main character, and I'm just having complications with figuring out her story. I do know her main goal, but I just don't know the complications that she's going to have in getting to that main goal. So I really need to kind of like take time and just brainstorm basically. I need to write down a bunch of different ideas and then try to figure out how I'm gonna make this super complicated because I want her story to be a struggle just like the rest of the characters because my main guy main character goes through some crap and my older male guy character goes through some crap. So everybody's got to go through some crap in this book. So that's kind of where I'm at this week. I need to take some time to really just kind of untangle her story and figure it out. Okay, so major change of plans. Originally, I was just gonna be editing and reading today, but then I was on Instagram and I saw that Alexander Bracken had a post saying she was gonna be in Kansas City tonight. And I was like, dang, I wish I would've known because I totally would've gone. And then I messaged Maureen and I was like, I wish we would've known this so we could've gone to it. And Maureen's like, we still could go. And I was like, we could. And she was like, should we? And I was like, should we? And we're like, okay, let's do it, let's go. I rushed over to Maureen's house and we're gonna go to Kansas City today, which is like two and a half hours away. And we're gonna go see Alexander Bracken. So that'll be fun. Are you excited? Maureen? Yeah. <laughs> Tinkerbell really wants to say hi to the camera. Say hi, Tinkerbell. Hello, dog. Where's Peter Pan? Where is he? We made it. We're running a little bit late though, and I have to pee. Ah, 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 ah. We can do it. We can do it. We can do it. We're like 20 minutes late. It's fine. It's fine.
I just got back from the book signing. It's been such a weird day because I was expecting to just do reading and editing today. And then I ended up going to a book signing in Kansas City. It was really unexpected, but it was really fun. I got my copy of The Last Life of Prince Alistair by Alexander Bracken signed, which if you ever get the chance to meet Alexander Bracken, you need to meet her. She's one of the nicest authors out there. She's got such a great personality. She's super humble and she's just super duper duper kind. I'm a big fan of kind people. On this tour, she was promoting this book, which is the conclusion to the Prosper Redding duology, which this duology is about this boy named Prosper Redding, who one day finds out that he's got a demon chilling inside him, just chilling, just living his life inside Prosper. I did a review on the first book, so if you want to see my thoughts on that, then I will leave a link to that down below in the description. But I'm excited to read this and to find out the conclusion to the story. Anyway, it's time to go to bed. I am tired. Alright guys, it's time to wrap up this reading vlog. I had a super successful reading week. I'm super happy with all the books that I read this week. I read One of Us is Lying by Karen A. McManus. I read The Field Guide to the North American Teenager by Ben Philippe. And I finished Two Can Keep a Secret by Karen A. McManus. I really, really enjoyed this book. I think I like this book more than I liked One of Us is Lying. Not to compare these two books because they are very different, but I feel like it's hard not to compare it because it is the same author and this is her second book. That's her first book. This one just felt like it was captivating the whole way through. While One of Us is Lying still had a very captivating storyline. A lot of time the subplots would kind of take you out of the main storyline, whereas this one maintains the main storyline's momentum. I do think that the shock factor was stronger in this book, but this one still had a lot of shocking things happen in it. I'm finding that Karen in McManus is really great with her characters, like really, really good with building up these really interesting characters. Can you tell that I'm trying to really emphasize it by saying really, really, really? Alexa, play really by Blackpink. But she really serves these characters that you might not care about necessarily, but you can't deny the fact that she does a really great job of building up these really interesting characters and just making them really distinct. Overall, I'm leaning on a 4 out of 5 stars with this book. Did you think this vlog was over? Well, it's not. While the majority of this vlog was filmed in February, I'm currently filming in March right now, so I will talk about that in a second, but first up, I've got some books to share with you. Book mail, book mail, we've got us some book mail. Hey, I'm pretty sure I just butchered that jingle, but we're just gonna pretend it didn't happen. First up, we have the Books Welcome Book of the Month for the month of April and we are working with Harper Christian. That was so fast I need to slow it down. And the book explosion book of the month for the month of April is To Best the Boys by Mary Weber. Aw oh, yeah, look at this cover. It's glorious. It's beautiful. I give it kisses. It's kiss worthy, okay? Don't judge me. Side note, our book explosion book of the month for the month of March is Restore Me by Tahara Mafi and our live show is going to be on next Wednesday, March 20th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time over on our book explosion channel. But this book, To Best the Boys, is our April book of the month and this book comes out on March 19th. In this book, we follow the residents of Pinsbury Port. Each year, they receive this mysterious letter. Where's this letter coming from? Who's sending it? Why's it gotta be so mysterious? I have no idea, but I'm gonna find out when I read this book. The letter essentially invites all the boys of this town to come and compete in this competition. The winner of the competition will receive a scholarship to the University of Stemwick. That's something that I'd definitely be down to compete for. College is expensive. The competition involves a maze of sorts, hence why there's a maze on this here book cover. And it sounds like it gets pretty rough, like they are fighting for this scholarship. They want it. They're here solely for the scholarship, not to have fun and make friends. No playing nice this time around. While this is a boys only competition, we have our girl character Rin coming into the picture. Rin's mother has become severely sick with this disease that's going around her town. Rin and her father are doing everything they can to find a cure and her dream is to go to school and to study to become a scientist. This is when she decides that screw the fact that this competition is for boys only she's going to disguise herself and she is going to go and compete for a scholarship. That way she can study and become a scientist. I am so excited for this book. It sounds excellent. I have this feeling that it's going to explore gender roles, which I 
love when books kind of take on that topic because I feel like it's such an interesting topic to take on. And I think this book has a bit of a fantastical element to it. It's categorized as fantasy on Goodreads, so I imagine that something involving the maze has a bit of magic involved in it, and I am pumped for that. Yeet oh yeet yeet. That was so uncalled for. Why did I just do that? I always have to take it two steps too far. But like I said, this is our April book of the month. You guys should totally go and pick this book up and join us in the month of April. There are also some pre-order goodies for this book, which I will leave more information for that down below in the description. Basically, you can pre-order this book, then send in your receipt and get some goodies. I believe it's like you get a maze and you get a paper doll of Ren and maybe some other things. But again, like I said, I will leave more information down below in the description. Next up, I partnered with HMH Teen and they sent me a finished copy of Blood Leaf by Crystal Smith, which holy book covers. This book is beautiful. It's super shiny. I don't know if it's showing up that well on camera, but in person it is shiny. I did haul an arc of this in a recent reading vlog where I told you what this book was about, but I will share again what this book is all about. This book follows our main character, Princess Aurelia, and she is the heir that nobody wants. Nobody wants her involved in the kingdom at all, which I'm very curious to find out why that is. Like, what did she do? What could she have possibly done to make people despise her so much? Because the description doesn't say anything. Like, does she make bad choices? Has she done some shady things? Is she straight up evil? I need to know. I need to read this book soon. She also has blood magic ability, which is banned in her kingdom, which maybe that's why people hate her so much, because she has blood magic ability. Anyway, because she's so despised, there is one day an assassination attempt. And Aurelia's like, nah, uh this is not gonna continue to happen. I'm getting the heck out of here. Which, heck, I'd be doing the same thing. So she disguises herself as a commoner, ends up in this new land, finds a bit of a new romance, is able to freely use her blood magic and perfect it. Then everything just kind of catches up to her and she must decide between her old life and her new life. Which one is she going to decide on? If I were her personally, I would be like, I'm going to take on this new life, forget that old crap. I'm not going to let anybody potentially try to assassinate me again. Nuh uh, no thanks, not today, not ever. But I'm very curious to find out what her choice is and everything that she has to consider in making that decision. So those are two books that I was sent recently that I thought that I would share with you guys. Now the reason I'm filming this ending portion in March is because of the fact that I was a terrible vlogger in the month of February. I did film from time to time. I did not film enough to make full on reading vlogs with the footage that I filmed. If you didn't watch my first vlog in this reader vlog series this year, then you missed the fact that I had been pre-filming all my vlogs and then posting them later on. And the reason I was doing that is because I wanted to spend my time on them and make them the best that I could, do my best with editing and not stress over making them. So yeah, that lasted like two months. I've also just decided that I want to kind of cut back on doing vlogs. I'm still going to do them. Like I literally have one coming up next week because I'm going to be filming this week and I'm going to be doing a 24 hour readathon vlog here pretty soon, which is something that has been highly requested. But I feel like my channel has kind of become oversaturated with reading vlogs and I don't want that to happen, but I kept getting behind on posting reading vlogs. So it would just be like reader vlog back to back to back. And I don't want that. I never want to be putting out the same content over and over. I want to keep things fresh and new. There are also days when I just don't feel like filming and that's hard when you're trying to do week-long reading vlogs. And I've realized too that I spend way too much time editing these reading vlogs and that time is taking away from A, reading, and B, making other videos that I really want to make. So I'm going to kind of cut down on reading vlogs. You're still going to get reading vlogs on this channel because I know that a lot of you guys love them. I enjoy making them too, but I just don't want my channel to solely be reading vlogs. I hope you guys understand. Anyway, that's it for this reading vlog. You guys should let me know down below in the comments some books that you've been reading recently, some books that you've been loving, or some books that you've been feeling kind of meh about. Let me know all your thoughts down below in the comments. If you like this video, be sure to go and hit that like button. If you want to see more bookish content from me, be sure to go and hit subscribe, or go and hit that bell icon and you'll be notified every time I post new videos. As always, thanks for watching, guys. I hope your day is bright and that tomorrow is brighter. Keep reading what your heart desires, and I will see you soon with a new video. Bye! Oh.